Welcome to this week's video. Before we even get into anything, I'm launching my brand new intro. If you've been here for a while or seen any of my videos, you guys know that this was my past intro for so long. I literally found this little video on YouTube and just put my name on it and added The Weeknd by SZA on it and called it a day. I'm so over it. It was a very iMovie like intro. I know it was iconic, but it's time to put that intro to rest. You guys are gonna love the new intro, I know. It. Before I launch it, I wanted to thank Jojo Nassim. She owns Halo Tide, but she's a really good friend of mine and she helped me find a graphic designer and designed the little graphic that I'm using. And then I want to thank my boyfriend Kai because he came up with the sound idea. Without further ado, hey guys, it's Luna. Did you like it? My name is in like the Clueless movie font. The music is like the Hannah Montana transition music. That's iconic because you know, Luna Montana, Hannah Montana, I thought it's perfect. Moving on. Today, I get a lot of questions and requests to do videos about ballet for beginners, starting ballet late. Today, I'm gonna show you how to be a ballerina for beginners. So I'm gonna show you how to do your hair, what outfit you need, the shoes you need, and all the basic steps and things you need to know. It's like a spark note of your first year of ballet. We're all in quarantine right now. I know that starting ballet can be very intimidating, especially when you're in a studio with a lot of people and you're scared of being judged. So I think that it's nice that you can do this in the safety of your own home. And I hope you guys enjoyed. Let's get started. First, I want to guide you through what you wear as a ballerina. So of course we have the tights. We wear these every day. It just shows off your legs, but these are definitely essential for ballet class. And then we have the leotards. They might look all the same to you guys, but if it's high cut, low cut, like all of it matters <laughs> to a ballet dancer. So you have your simple ones, ones with little details. And then you have the Chanel of leotards, which is Yumiko brand. You basically customize your own leotard. They're the best. And then you just have really fancy ones. You can find any of this stuff on Discount Dance. That's where I normally buy a lot of my dancewear. Warm-ups are essential if you're trying to look more professional. These things are called trash bag shorts. Those are great. Leg warmers are essential. These are Ruby Aware and they are huge in the dance community right now. But you also have your basic little knit leg warmers. And then skirts are also so important. So you have your basic wrap skirt, but I really like bullet point skirts. It's a brand called bullet point. That's why we call them that, but they are great. And then we have shoes. So you have your basic ballet slippers. This is if you're doing a flat technique class. These are my favorite shoes. I've worn these forever. They're the block Zenith. I will link them all below. You always want to get a split sole shoe, never get the one sole. There are plenty of different brands and types of ballet slippers. You just have to find the one that works for you. And then you have your point shoes. Obviously you don't wear point shoes unless you are advanced and have trained for a while. I went on point when I was about 10 years old. So you have to work up the strength. It's very dangerous if you go on point as a beginner. So don't do that. Point shoes are so specific to your foot shape. You can go get fitted for point shoes, but it does take a while to find the right shoe. I've tried literally every brand on the planet. I wear Freed of London, which is probably the biggest brand in professional companies. Freed of London shoes have so many different makers. There's bee maker, star maker, wine glass maker. So every shoe is made by one guy in London, different X's. So one X is the smaller width, and then there's two X, three X, and then obviously they have sizes. I'm a size five and a half in point shoes. I wear Freed Classics. Um, my favorite makers are Star Maker, B Maker. Professionals get their point shoes customized once they're in the company. I did it for fun because you can also go to the store and do it. These are customized to me. They say Montana on them. They're Star Maker. I had them lower here. I had a bendier shank. I got elastic drawstring. This isn't really anything you have to worry about though, being a beginner, so. That is the rundown on ballet attire. I know it all seems very specific, but you don't need to worry about it too much being a beginner. Just get a nice nice pair of ballet slippers, a nice pair of tights, a leotard, a skirt, maybe leg warmers, and you're fine. Taking care of your toes and your feet is very important as a ballet dancer is because bunions, corns, blisters are all so common. We wear toe pads. Some dancers don't. A lot of dancers actually wrap their feet in paper towel. I use these toe pads. They're really, really gross to show on here. They're called Perfect Fit Point, and you actually mold your toes in this putty and it dries. These I found work the best. I also wear little spacers. Let's change, get into your outfit, let's go. Okay, I'm all changed in, feeling good, but I wanted to talk about my jewelry that I'm wearing today because it's from 
Pura Vida, and this video is actually sponsored by Pura Vida. I'm someone that loves to wear jewelry when I dance, if your teacher allows it. I love wearing little dangly earrings as long as they don't get in the way, and these ones I'm wearing right now are so cute. They're just little stars. I've been trying to make the effort to be more sustainable and buy from brands that help the environment and help other causes. And Pura Vida is now a worldwide movement that gives back. Each Pura Vida bracelet is unique to you and they have so many styles to choose from. I'm wearing this one today because it's pink for ballet and it has a little butterfly, which is so cute. And obviously the jewelry I'm wearing, my name is Luna. So this ring moon is so cute and these little star earrings are perfect, very on brand for me. I'm talking about them this month because Pura Pura Vida is partnering up with Feeding America for the month of April. Feeding America food banks are trusted community organizations committed to helping people in need wherever they are. With the coronavirus outbreak happening right now, Feeding America's network of 200 food banks will continue to distribute food to the people and communities they serve. During the month of April, $1 of each sale with Pura Vida will go to buying a meal. Pura Vida's goal is to buy 2 million meals in the month of April. So if you want to help out, you can save 20% on your first Pura Vida purchase. All you have to do is click the link in my description, use the code here, and you can get 20% off, and a dollar will be donated to Feeding America. And thank you, Pura Vida, for partnering with me on this video. So, ballerinas wear buns because it is the most efficient way to have your hair out of your face. The first thing you want to do is slick your hair into a high ponytail. You could do low buns too, but I'm going to show you how to do the simple high bun right now. I just like hairspraying around, and then you're just going to slick your hair into a ponytail. You can use a brush and just make it as slick as possible. So once it's in a high ponytail, I love to have a little bit of height on the front of my hair so I make a little poof. I basically just push my hair out a little bit, a little bit of my hair in the front so that it has a little bit of height and it's not so egg-shaped. <laughs> so as for pins, I have very thick hair so I use very big bobby pins, but you can find these anywhere, CVS, order them on Amazon. Whatever works and holds your hair in place is perfect. So let me show you from the back side. So your hair is in a high ponytail now, what you're gonna do is take your hair and twist it into one long twist, like that. And you're gonna start by going, I like going counterclockwise. So I'm gonna take this twist and I'm gonna twist it around, holding it, keep twisting until you make a bun shape just like this. That's how I do it. And then with this excess hair, I tuck it under the bun like that tuck it under and then press everything down and hold it with my left hand. Now I'm gonna take each bobby pin and just pin it in. So I go down with the bobby pin and then in. And you have to do this until it feels super secure. So again, down and in. See, this is kind of what you don't want, but you can always pin this too. And that is how you do the most simple bun. You can make it more fancy. Also, just be simple. It's just to get your hair out of your face at the end of the day. I'm going to do a little bit of light makeup because I like looking presentable when I dance. Prettier and more graceful when I have makeup on. So I just do very light ballet makeup. Okay, now that you have your outfit, your hair, everything done, you are ready to start dancing. Of course, we're all quarantined, so just find a space in your house where you have space to move. This is my makeshift studio right here, just to show you guys the basics. It's impossible, really, to do ballet unless you have Marley floor, which is what we dance on. This floor is from Home Depot. It's actually like a working mat, and it's pretty good. It does what I need it to do, so that's what we're using today. But let's start out with the basics, how to be a ballerina. Let's start training. Of course, you have to put on your ballet slippers. They should feel very snug to your foot, but not too snug, where you still have range of motion in your toes, but also it's not baggy and you can really see your foot shape. So I'm going to teach you some ballet basics on the floor. Let's talk about feet for a little bit. The most important thing, we're always pointing our feet in ballet. I'm pretty sure you guys all know how to point your foot. Some people are naturally born with really, really good arches, which means it's more curved. Mine isn't that great. When pointing your foot, it's really important that it's a straight line or it's curving a little bit out and winging. You never want it to be sickled like that. So you always want it to be straight from your ankle bone to your foot. Sometimes we flex our feet. This is a point and then this is a flex. As for hands, hands are also very important in ballet. You can look very, very amateur if you're doing your hands wrong. So in ballet, when I was trained, I was trained that you hold the thumb to the middle finger, 
like the bottom of the middle finger and that's kind of your position and you can work from there but the thumbs are always tucked however there's so many ballet techniques there's russian trained which is vaganova and that is very straight handed there's Shaketti trade, which is Italian, and that's more loose. And then you have Balanchine, which is more of a very loose, showing all fingers type of hand. I was actually Shaketti trained, but I love Balanchine. I went to SAB in Miami and Boston, where it's all very Balanchine based. So you just want to be very, very flowy with your hands. They're like feathers. Something so important in ballet is posture. Obviously, a ballerina's posture, you can never, ever slouch. You always have to be upright, shoulders back, not too back, just very, very nice posture. So in ballet, you have your five basic positions. You have first position, so your heels are touching, legs are super straight, and you open your feet. Second position, you just take that out and you want it to just be a little bit of a space. Think about one foot in between. Go to that toe and then put your heel there. Then you have third position. We never use as ballet dancers, but it's just like a very open fifth like this. And then you have fourth position, which your feet are in front of each other. Again, it's like one foot's length in between. This is fourth position here. Fifth position is this, but you just take this foot and close it. So your heel is touching your other toe and you're turned out in fifth position. You use those throughout every single thing you do in dance. Those are the first thing you normally learn when you learn ballet. Arm positions, we have a low fifth, which you want to think of holding a beach ball is how I was trained. Your arms are just slightly curved up, posture, shoulders down, this is low fifth position. First position with the arms is here, again, you want to think of your hands in front of your belly button, this is first position. This is high fifth, just like this, it's low fifth, but this time it's high, again you have to keep your shoulders down. This is second position with the arms, shoulders are down, elbows are lifted, it's so common for dancers to droop their elbows, but you really need to keep this lifted. To go from second position down to fifth, you have to open and float your arms down always. And then when we get fancier, we have arabesques, second arabesques, we have rounded arms like this, third positions. We also have different body directions. We have quasi, a face, a carte, all these different positions that you learn as you go. So the first move that you normally do in ballet class at the bar is called a plie. So let's say we're in first position. A plie is a bend of the knees. So a demi plie would just be very shallow and short, just a slight bend with the knees. Your heels are on the floor still. A grand plie in first would go all the way down. Your heels would lift up and then you'd come up. Obviously we would start by holding a bar. I don't have one here, but this is what you do. You do demi plies first at the bar. It's normally demi demi, like grand plie up. And that is how you normally warm up. It's just something that you will always use throughout your dancing. So plies, super important. The second thing we do at the bar is called a tendu. A tendu is basically your foot goes out, points, and then comes back in. So you're sliding your foot along the floor. So if we put our hands on our hips, let's say we're doing a tendu in second and we're in first. You want to slide your foot out, point, and slide it back in. And that's your tendu. Third thing, we do dégagés, which is a tendu, but you're gonna lift your toe off the floor at the very end. So it's gonna go like this, up, in. So it's just off the floor. And that's kind of what I want you guys to focus on if you're starting ballet right now. Just focus on learning how to do your plies right. Like, am I lifted? Is my posture good? Are my shoulders down? Are my hands floating? Are my heels on the ground? Are my feet turned out? If you don't have your technique solid, then you can't really advance from there. Okay, being flexible is obviously very important in ballet. A lot of people are born naturally flexible. I was one of those, but I've also been doing ballet since I was three, so stretching is so important as a ballerina. So I'm gonna show you some basic stretches that you can do. Start out by having both legs in front of you, and this is simple, but you just really, really want to stretch your hamstrings because that's probably the muscle in your body that you need to be the most stretched for ballet, just to do legs going up to the side, everything you need to have loose hamstrings, so this is obviously a good one. And then, of course, getting your splits in ballet. It's not crucial, but it does make everything a lot easier if you have them. Middle splits, both legs are just out. It's always good and nice to stretch this. Even if you're just here for now, you can stretch forward. If you're all the way out here, you can go up and over. This just really stretches your inner thigh, which has to be pretty stretched out again for ballet. And then you have your right splits like this. If you don't have your full split and it's hard for you, bend the back leg and just keep trying and trying and trying to get into a full split. Those are some basic ballet stretches that you can do. Also, stretching your back is super important. You want to have a flexible back. So doing this, very good as well. A little cobra stretch. 
If you are starting out and you're a beginner, I just want to remind you guys that ballet is an art and it takes a lot of training and practice, but it's never too late to start. If you guys are interested, I encourage you all to just try it out. Right now in quarantine, you don't even need to have all the gear and stuff. Just put on some socks, some sweatpants, and just try. I'm just obviously showing you how it is when you're going into a class. If this inspired any of you guys to try ballet out, then I'm so happy. Hopefully, we can all be a army of ballerinas together in the future. <laughs> That's it for this video. Thank you Pura Vida again for sponsoring and I love you guys literally to the moon and back. <laughs> Bye.